I ain't got no problem with that, but some of y'all do, so let's talk about it. In fact, what some of y'all got a problem with mm -hmm. is Bun getting on the stand and testifying against this dude who put a gun to his wife's head, who, in, who invaded his house, right. who invaded his privacy. Who... Now, let's start right there. First of all, Bun B didn't testify. It was not a trial. The young man pled guilty. This was a, a sentencing hearing is what it was. It was a sentencing hearing. Now, do I believe Bun B snitched? No. I do believe what he did was overkill. Because if you're not going to kill somebody, you shouldn't play with their life. Bun B had the chance to kill this guy. <clears throat> he didn't. The guy was arrested. The guy pled guilty. This happened in Texas. No matter what he did, he was going to jail for at least 10, 20 years. To go in there and testify, I feel like was overkill. Did you see his wife? She couldn't even hold her head up. I'm not sure I could have made my woman go through that. Well, no, I rephrase that. I'm absolutely sure I couldn't have made my woman go through that. And this is not me speaking ignorantly from my feelings. I have been through a very similar situation. Only difference is it happened in the driveway. And properly, the bullshit came to me first. Not my old lady. With that being said, <clears throat> by her being there and the kids, it was an ordeal for the entire family. And before I realized whether or not this person was dead, because I thought he got away, it was the thought of what do we do? Do we keep the house? Do we sell the house? So on and so forth. Or is this guy something to worry about? And I can remember a couple days later, day and a half later or so, finding out that the guy had passed away. And it brought a sense of relief in one aspect. And in the other aspect, it brought a sense of disbelief. But the number one thing that we had both already agreed on was if he was found alive, we wasn't going to court. We wasn't going to... I know it wouldn't have been giving him satisfaction, but we wasn't going to do that to ourselves. That's a hard experience, especially seeing how in those type of situations, the state is already going to do what the state is going to do. All you can do is add on. Now, <clears throat> me personally, if somebody wronged me or violated to that degree, how long they spend in jail doesn't necessarily make a difference. You know, like if a motherfucker get 20 years and I can get them 40 years, that don't really make a difference. If that's the case, you might as well have killed the guy. But to not kill a guy, but to bury him alive in jail, that's kind of, that was overkill to me. And this is obviously a young, impoverished dude. And even more sadly so, with a disconnect comes in that, is Bun B made gangster. Bun B made the song A Kick Though, where he rapped about this exact same thing in the beginning of the verse, somebody trying to run up in his house, and at the end of the verse, he talking about running up in somebody else's house for what they got in there. How do you know? Because when you listen to the rap, sometimes it does create a space of ignorance in a young brain. How do you know he just wasn't listening to one of your songs and thought that was the thing to do because he didn't have shit? And that's where this rap shit get a little funny at. Like, yeah, do I bust raps? Yeah, but my raps are about what I realistically do in my life. Now, obviously, from listening to Pull a Kick, though, ain't nobody on that song kicked in nobody's door and robbed them because they all gave bad advice about how to pull a kick, though. 
But making songs like that, when you don't actually do that, can be misleading. And that's where people are having a problem with. It is a problem when Mr. Trill himself is testifying in a case. That is a problem. That is a misleading type of thing. And to be honest with you, I'm not necessarily a fan of street culture. And my displeasure with this situation has nothing to do with the streets. It has everything to do with the image that has been present presented. We know more about Bun B as a rapper than we do about him as a college professor. As a matter of fact, it wasn't no promotion or no word about him being a college professor until he had a disagreement with somebody. Now, is that Bun B's fault? No, not exactly. But he did make that music. He did say what he said in verses. And he did make a living off of people thinking that he was really like that and the words that came out of the, out of his mouth was true. So you can't turn around and blame people for believing the image that you gave them. That, that's all I'm saying. Threatened his wife's life, who threatened his life. Right. Y'all got a problem with him getting on the stand and helping to put this uncivilized mud away. Y'all would y'all would rather this uncivilized mud roam the streets or you want Bond to go out there and finish the job and risk being taken away from his family forever. Which one is which one is it, you dummy? Now hold on here now. This is where it get a now everybody know I mess with Willie D, but this is where this story get a little bit convoluted at. Uh, Bun B did risk his freedom because he chased this guy down. And then he made the guy strip so he could see his face and his tattoos because he wanted to make sure this guy wasn't connected to nobody that he may have had a problem with or did something to back in the day. Which further, which further makes this overkill and unfair. You understand what I'm saying? Because if you've done things in life to where someone would kick in your door specifically just to come to you with some drama, then that means you feel like you might deserve for that to happen based on what things that you've done. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I'm a licensed gun carrier. If somebody break in my house and then they run into the garage trying to get out of it, I can't then chase them. If they come in my house and I shoot them, then cool. But the moment they go to like try to leave my house, I cannot, it's illegal. It is illegal for me to chase them down and try to do anything to them. Facts. But Bun B was able to do that and get a pass. So I feel like grace, grace should be shown on, on all levels. You know what I'm saying? The young man was going to jail regardless because he pled guilty. He was going to jail regardless because he got caught red-handed in a good neighborhood. Cops showed up like that. So he was going to jail regardless. Sitting on the stand in the sentencing hearing was overkill. So now instead of getting 25 years, he got 40 years. And that basically just takes away, even if he could be rehabilitated, that takes away all opportunity for life. I don't feel like, I don't necessarily feel like that's worth it. You know what I'm saying? To me, to be honest with you, I don't feel like nobody should ever have to do no more than 10 or 12 years in jail unless they touch the kid. Now, if they touch the kid or kill the kid or some shit like that, then yeah. But some of this other stuff, not really. If you're a serial killer, yeah. But I mean, because there's no better or no worse you're going to get after 12 years in jail, but we will be paying for your ass to be there. And that ain't really cool. It's other shit we can utilize you for. But that's just my opinion. And shit, that look like a young Thundercat. He still probably had the opportunity to learn learn and know better. What was Bun B doing at that young nigga's age? And let's be clear, fam. I'm talking about the weirdos. All you weirdos out there talking about this so-called street code. What goddamn street code? Man, there ain't been a street code since the 70s. Don't tell me nothing about no street code. Half of your mamas and daddies locked up right now behind a so-called street code. Street code, man, fuck the streets. 
Streets ain't never did nothing for me, but got my ass in trouble. Clean that up, Will. Clean that up. Clean that up. And the streets ain't really did that. I did it to myself being out in the streets. Thank you. Cutting up. I'm so glad you just cleaned that up. I'm so glad you just cleaned that up because that right there is the motherfucking truth. That's the truth. Now, this young man, make no mistake about it, he did it to himself, but we don't know what situation this boy was coming out of. For all we know, he could have been the sole breadwinner in his house, lost his job, and not been able to find another one. And all he could do was thinking about robbing somebody because he'd been riding around bumping C-Murder, pull a kick, though. Who knows? Will Bun be featuring? Ripping and running just in the streets, man, ain't nothing good gonna come from that. Unless you're a construction worker, you out there, you building streets. You lying the pavement, you laying the pavement. Ain't shit gonna come you good for the construction bridges. worker either. Other than that, you gonna die, fool. You going to the prison, fool. What street code is this y'all talking about? I need to know. Cause Willie D is absolutely right. Now, where well, the problem is, why you wasn't saying that shit when you were selling a million records? That's the problem. That's the problem. You can't like, you can't piss in the pool for twenty or thirty years, then say, "Damn, I'm forty-five. Stop pissing in the pool, y'all. Don't piss in the pool. We all gotta swim in here. Whoop de whoop de whoop." You've been pissing in this pool for 30 years. And that's the problem. Bun B pissed in this pool. Willie D pissed in this pool. And all y'all been pissing in the pool. And now y'all in the jacuzzi chilling. And you upset because the water is discolored. But let's not forget, you was pissing in that pool too. So to tell the people that's in the pool now that you in the jacuzzi that they should stop pissing in the pool knowing goddamn well you've been pissing in the pool that's a lost cause. That's a lost cause at all. And, and and like this whole street code transition, as far as music goes on the internet wise goes, like all of y'all old school guys been standing on that. Willie D came onto the internet kicking ass, kind of like his rap persona. And then he morphed it over into doing the news and it is center that and of that and it is Bun B. He transferred right out of gangster rap into what? Trill Burgers. And his college, prof if, if I'm not mistaken, in his college professionalism, he's teaching classes about uh, socioeconomic engineering and, and, and how that relates to the music of the culture or some shit like that. So, like, all of these people have made legitimate livings off of gangster rap, and then they legitimize themselves as individuals using their status and their terminology from gangster rap. T.I. on the Trap Museum. He was almost a full-blown politician. He owns the Trap Museum. So the hypocrisy starts with you guys. Before you get to telling the kids that they confuse, what you need to realize is y'all confused them. Do I agree with Willie D? Yeah, but accountability is something that they need to grab a mirror and speak to. And then I'm going to say this one thing about Texas in particular as where it comes to music. Y'all told a line about what and what is not telling. Somebody told on Big Mike. Somebody's flat out snitched on Big Mike and everybody was in the streets then, but that got swept under the rug. That got swept right under the rug. Zero told on Trey the truth. With that, swept right under the rug. Lil Troy put out some paperwork on Scarface that said he snitched. Swept right under the rug. I can go on and on and on about these Texas gangster rappers having suspicious activity, shall we say, as it relates to being in the streets and cooperating with police. Now, it seems to me, more specifically, when it comes to Texas and rappers from Texas, that you guys are allowed a lot more latitude as it relates to offering information and or calling the police on the opposition. Now, with that being said, 
I personally do not believe what Bun B did was snitching, but I do think it was overkill. I also think he shouldn't have put his wife up there. And that's just coming from a person that's been in that exact situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if I could have did that. I don't know if I could have allowed me to watch my woman be made to feel that way in front of me. That's almost as worse, as bad as watching her have sex with somebody else. You know what I'm saying? That's that's not nothing I would have signed up for under not too many circumstances. But that's just me. Do I advocate you going out there to kill somebody? I mean, depending on what it is. Depending on what it is. And I mean, let's be clear here. You know, things are going to happen to all of us throughout life. Putting somebody else in jail is not going to necessarily change those feelings. You know what I'm saying? My brother got killed. My, <clears throat> my father killed my brother. And my brother's mother went to court every day. And she gave those statements and she watched that trial. And she went to the sentencing hearing and she spoke her piece about her child and everything. When it was all said and done, even though my father took a gun and killed my brother in cold blood, he ended up getting three years for the gun and nothing else. You know what I'm saying? And with that being said, her sitting up there on that stand didn't give her absolutely no closure at all. And participating in that process and then watching how it played out didn't help her mentally, spiritually, or physically at all and that's from my own personal experience do i think queenie's depression or her stress or her anxiety from this situation is gonna go away because she testified absolutely not i think it's gonna give her a temporary feeling of relief now and not, and then after she has to deal with looking him in the face while she did that on top of what she been through and it's just like never closing the door cycle. To be honest with you, in those type of situations, if you ain't going to kill a motherfucker, go and let him go. And if the police get him, let the police do what they're going to do. But you need to disassociate yourself from the whole situation because whatever you do is going to feel like a loss. Whatever you don't get is going to feel like a loss. Whatever you do get is going to feel like a loss. And then, like, let's be clear here. We all got kids. I got a 13-year-old doing all kind of dumb shit right now. He know better than to be robbing somebody. But at the same time, would I want his whole life gone because he did something dumb in his 20s? Probably not. Probably not. Shit, I ain't get good sense till I was 32, 33 years old. That's a lot of people. So as a black man, knowing damn well so many people don't have a chance, I couldn't just advocate for somebody who didn't touch a kid or kill a kid to just be getting a life sentence. You know what I'm saying? I I, I I just can't do that. You know what I'm saying? And if I felt it, if I felt compelled to the point where I felt as though I needed to testify, then that dude got to die. I can't say that's the best advice. I'm not going to tell you how I would go about it. I'm not going to say that I would actually do it. But how I feel how I would be thinking is that guy got to go. No ands if a bus about it because if something makes me think about violating my moral code and compass, it has to go. And that has nothing to do with the streets or the street code at all. At all. But just bottom line, I did certain things in my life so I can't act oblivious if I come in contact with them another way. You get me? And I'm pretty sure Bun B did. And not only did he do it, he used this... He used this linguistic exuberance to express these ideals and impress them upon young minds for a living for 30 years. So you can't get mad at the things that you say and rap about coming around. You know what I'm saying? I rap about uh I rap about being a playboy, you know? Well Puffy didn't ruin that whole word, but I rap about being a player, you know, a true player for life. And you know what happened after I started making them songs? I had a whole extra three kids. Real fast. Boom, boom, boom. Can I blame that on somebody? Can I go testify against my baby mama? Fuck no. I put that out into the energy 
rapping about. You understand? No different than me rapping about what I would do if somebody tried me at home and then I had somebody try me at home. Can I get extra mad? No. No. And with that being said, all of y'all remember the power is in the tongue, man. So when you speaking on things, you might want to keep it close to who you really are in real life every day, all day. And on that note, we out of here. And I just like to add to this whole conversation. I can get on YouTube and say a whole lot of shit that would get more views and, 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 and sell more ads and this, that, or whatever. But you know what? I'm not willing to stand up for the shit that I can say to make money all day, every day. So I don't do that. I keep it at what I'm willing to stand up for. You know what I'm saying? And with that being said, we out of here. And if you're rapping about breaking in people's houses, don't be so distraught if someone breaks into yours because you put it out there. You know, certain things I don't even talk about, I don't even say, like... Like, like, like what happens when two cars meet up at the wrong time. Shit like that I don't talk about. I don't even speculate or bring it up. And that's how we need to do with a lot of things. If you don't want to deal with something, you don't want it happen in your life, the number one thing you need to not do is be talking about it or wishing it on or putting it in somebody else's life. And that's just a little common sense from our great-grandfather. We out this bitch, why bother?